If you have noticed the various infill patterns in Cura, you see that there's just way too many options. Why do we have all of these? Which one takes the least filament? Which one prints the fastest? Which ones are the strongest? Let's cover all of that in this video. So we have the grid pattern, which is just simply a very simple grid. It is a simple pattern, typically used with most 3D prints. For this size model, we see eight grams is used, one hour and five minutes total. So the lines infill pattern honestly just look like the grid, just with smaller grids. It's supposed to be made for models and figurines that don't really require too much strength. But from what I can tell, it still takes eight grams. It's not any faster at one hour and five minutes, but this is the line pattern. So this is a triangle pattern, and well, you guessed it. It's just an assortment of triangles. This is gonna allow you to have more strength, and especially if you have something that looks like a pyramid or made of triangles, this will ensure that it is properly supported. Triangle has eight grams of filament used at also one hour and five minutes. Now we have trihexagon, and it is an assortment of hexagons and triangles. This gives good support, stability, gives strength, and uh, prevents bowing because there are smaller lines connected to each other within that support structure and that infill. For this, we still got eight grams, and we knocked it down all the way to one hour and four minutes. Very impressive. This is the cubic infill pattern, and essentially it's just cubes that are stacked on top of each other and also tilted, but because of that, the theory is that in all directions, you are able to put more force on these prints without them failing, not just on the face of them. The cubic infill pattern only uses seven grams of filament. It's still one hour and four minutes. Cubic subdivision is very similar to cubic, but in theory it uses less filament. However, in this small test, I'm printing something fairly small, this is not the case. It's still taking seven grams, still takes one hour and four minutes, but still produces the same advantages as cubic. So octet has the same advantages as cubic, but it is stacked pyramids instead of cubes. It takes eight grams of filament and is one hour and four minutes to completion. Quarter cubic is similar to octet, but the triangles are shifted. It also provides structural support on all sides of the model, not just on the faces. So advantages there it is pretty strong. It does take eight grams of filament and one hour, five minutes. So the concentric pattern not only looks cool, but is actually very good if you have something that you need to bend and flex. This allows the model to be able to do that. It takes seven grams. It also takes one hour and 30 minutes for this column that I'm printing. If you notice, zigzag looks just like grid, but there are smaller boxes. So it's typically good for models, figurines, things that don't need a ton of structural integrity. It takes eight grams and one hour and five minutes to print. So we fancy now with this cross, I mean, it has to probably be the coolest pattern, but it takes longer because obviously it's a bit more intricate. Seven grams, one hour, 13 minutes. So that does take longer than any other infill pattern. These are typically, again, good for models that you need to flex and bend. Cross 3D is a wacky and wonderful version of cross infill pattern with all the same advantages. It uses seven grams of filament and a little less time at one hour and 11 minutes. So gyroid is a very unique infill pattern. Looks like kind of, I don't know, a bunch of waves. And because of that, it provides support on all sides of a model. So anything that may be stressed in any way, this would be a good option. It takes seven grams and one hour and 10 minutes to print. So lightning is one of the more um, odd infill patterns, but the advantages are apparent. Only five grams of filament, one hour, one minute in order to print. However, at the sacrifice of using less filament and being so much faster, as you could tell, this probably isn't going to provide as much support. So stick to having little models or figurines, things that aren't gonna be stressed much for this infill pattern.
So I know the size of the model will impact these parameters in the result. So what I did next was scale the model so it's now 10 cm tall instead of 3 cm tall. I'm showing the results right here, and as expected, there are some big changes. Many of the infill patterns don't really differentiate themselves, but there are some key differences here. First of all, the cubic subdivision uses about 15 grams less filament and is about 30 minutes faster. And remember, this is good for standard models, proving a mix of speed and strength. We see concentric, cross, and cross 3D all use less filament, but at a cost of time, sometimes dramatically. Look, the cross pattern takes over 11 hours of print. So remember, you only use these if you have models that really need to be flexible. Then we have my buddy Lightning Infill, which saves over an hour of print time and uses less than half the filament than the standard infill patterns. Again, you are majorly going to sacrifice strength, but if you're printing models, this is perfect. This is definitely the infill pattern to go. And note that if you're printing something bigger than 10 cm, like most of us do, then the time and filament savings will scale and be even bigger. But this at least gives you a good idea of what to expect and what patterns to use when. At this point, I was going to do a stress test, but I'm going to save that for the next video so this doesn't get too long. So in conclusion, anything less than 5 cm tall or just a small model in general, I really don't think the info pattern does much in terms of filament or time savings. And I'd also guess not too much in terms of strength, aside from lightning, which looks to be weak. But if you scale up to a moderately sized print, cubic subdivision is definitely the way to go, unless you are making a flexible model and then go with fast lightning if you don't care about strength and all you want is that fast cheap print infill. Thank you for watching and next time we'll crush some PLA.